Hi, my name is William Zhou. Oh. I am the CEO mm -hmm. of Evo Eco. I'm Karen Chang. I'm faculty at the University of Washington in Seattle. I'm Christine Matthews, also faculty at the University of Washington in Seattle. Oh, so, how did you, what was this collaboration like? How did this work out? Well, with actually, we began the project, and then Will has actually purchased our invention and is licensing oh. it as a startup company. Yeah. Oh, great. So, we help, uh, we're commercializing what they're building uh, to take it to market. Oh, cool. Is it in the market now? Yes. Yeah. You can buy a set. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, so, we created a long? prototype that started at the University of yeah. Washington, and now it's being played out to be able to be adaptable for any company anywhere with their particular waste stream. How long has it been out in the market? Um, so we have, what, like six units on campus that have been, you know, in the testing phase for over a year. Um, and we're getting ready to roll out to a bunch of client sites in the next few weeks. In fact, tomorrow we're going to go to Pinterest because they're going to have them there in their cafeteria. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, give us a two-minute overview of what Smart Bins is. I'll let you do it. Sure. Get to your pitch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, as legislation pushes towards zero waste, we've seen that a lot of these businesses are interested in figuring out, hey, how do I figure out what's going into my waste streams? How do I get my diversion numbers up? How do I get people to compost and recycle properly? So what we do is we built this system, um, you know, the smart bins, that allow for these building operators to communicate with consumers and their customers, employees, visitors, hey, this is where your waste needs to go. Here's what the gamification user response looks like. And essentially, we've seen diversion numbers go up from our research studies. So th the problem that you're trying to solve, I mean, it, it seems like it's been around ever since the compost and recycling bins have come around. What makes you think this is going to be the disruptive solution for changing that behavior? I think the difference between what we have is it's actually interactive. Most of the solutions that you see are signage based. There's just little you know, icons of what goes in what bin. So the fact that, first of all, these things are a lot larger because they're TV, and we're actually giving people some kind of feedback from when they put something in a bin. Right now, when you throw something away, there's no reward or no response. Mm -hmm. you know, these bins actually respond to people. Mm -hmm. And how much, uh, what percentage of your participants are actually really um, interacting or actually uh, reacting to that reward structure. And you, most people just kind of want to throw something away and are you seeing a huge uh, response? Yeah, when the bins were piloted at the University of Washington in a cafe, that cafe has maybe like 40 to 50 people an hour traveling through depending on what time of day it is. Mm -hmm. And over, you know, 25 to 40 percent of the people stop and either um, take pictures of the installation, use the installation, show it to their friends. Mm -hmm. Now, college campus can be a little bit different than like, you know, inner city, you know, public. Is there anything different about the different populations that you tested with this that was surprising? I think that it works a lot better um, at places where people are regulars. Mm -hmm. um, luckily at like a cafe um, or even at a place like this, like SAP, the same people are coming to the cafeteria so that they look at it over time and they can catch the video at different times and see mm -hmm. the different um, information. Mm -hmm. um, so because I think it's not something that most people would stay and watch over the full um, 60 second loop. So the more that you can glance and see it and interact with it over time, the more successful it is. Mm -hmm. As far as the you know, proposed customer base for this, uh, you said it's going to be installed at Pinterest. That's a, um, a startup, but they're not public yet. Are oh, they public? No, they're a, oh. they're a large size. They're large. Yeah. Um, who who are the proposed set of types of customers and? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the main thing is we're trying to target high traffic venues, areas where you have lots of people coming in and out. Um, as Karen mentioned, uh, regulars are often an exciting aspect, but that doesn't always have to be the case. Um, you can think of shopping malls, airports, corporate campuses, anywhere where you know the facility wants to engage consumers on doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. What we try and do is we push out new content on the screens, we create an engaging experience for the consumer, mm -hmm. and that content is updated all the time. Mm -hmm. I thought you might say something about the video design because you really, you know, you can't see that part, but I actually think that's really mm -hmm. the magic of our particular Absolutely. solution. Oh, it's trying to um, solve this problem with design as well as with technology. So usually the the design solutions that have come up around these things are pretty ugly, and the trash itself is really ugly. And so 
one thing we wanted to do was make it actually a really beautiful experience that um, looking at these videos that are quite well crafted, they become an enjoyable experience. So people want to spend absolutely minimal time deciding where to throw away their waste, but if we create something that's visually engaging, hopefully it becomes an education moment at the same time. Okay, great. Um, that was my question. Oh, so, <clears throat> You know, the bins are one touch point of a much larger ecosystem of waste removal. Uh, are you guys thinking about any other parts of the system, or is there something on the roadmap? The back end. Mm. Yeah, so I think there's a couple of things that we have in the works. Um, you know, we're really trying to take a dual-pronged approach where you have design and technology uh, in order to create an invigorating user experience. So on one end, you know, there are beautifully crafted videos, there's tons of fun engagement alerts, but on the other end, you know, we're also trying to provide the data and analytics for these building operators to see, hey, this is how much my waste stream is at. What do I need to hit for my diversion rate? What are, how can I change the messaging on the screens um, to better accompany what my consumers need? And the other aspect, which I mentioned a little earlier, but we actually have cameras inside that take in data of who's throwing what away when and where. Eventually, what we'd love to do is when a consumer walks up to the bin, we'd be able to say, hey, is that a Starbucks cup or is that a, you know, San Pellegrino bottle that belongs in recycling or compost, depending on the needs of that site. Mm -hmm. It's also an interesting challenge, I think, because there's so many people and organizations, groups that are involved in the decision-making process mm -hmm. of what gets put into these buildings, mm -hmm. especially like a Pinterest or a Starbucks where they, you know, design is highly valued, so they want something that's aesthetically really effective, but they also want something that really works and has all of the back-end technology worked out as well. So it's been an interesting process for us to take something that was a prototype on one university campus and then for Will to try and take that forward and make it work in very different environments for very different clients and show how it can be customized for them. I did want to say that um, it's interesting for us to try to get in cafes like Starbucks, for example, because I think some of these places, unlike like a Pinterest or even an SAP or these corporate offices, they have messaging that they want to give to their consumers, both in terms of like, you know, there's a daily special at this time, or if you come back in the afternoon, you can get a free drink, but also they want to explain the things that they're doing for the environment. Yeah. Sometimes that's not transparent that to people that hey this cup contains 10% post consumer fiber or that you know we pioneered this lighter plastic cup which uses you know less energy to produce yeah. so i think like the platform also gives certain kinds of customers those kinds of opportunities you know to talk to people who use their stores yeah. mm -hmm. And waste is generally a, a very behind the scenes situation. Like people don't want to see it, they just want it to disappear, you don't want to think about it anymore. And weirdly, we kind of give more real estate to something that normally um, you want to kind of uh, brush under the carpet, um, but hopefully make that something positive rather than a negative story, which hopefully is effective. I think one of our core beliefs <coughs> is, you know, how can we create something that empowers a consumer to do the right thing? Right. Yeah. I think people <coughs> want to do the right thing, but at the same time, they're not willing to spend a whole lot of time making these decisions. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible for them to do yeah. the right thing and feel good about it. There's also an aspect where when you see your company or a facility really invest in something that is important to their goals, you as a consumer uh, begin to understand that, hey, this is how I should align my values as well. So sort of the thing that we explore is how can you uh, crowdsource this idea that, hey, waste is based on individual con contribution, but as well as a community contribution. And you know, with all the data and analytics we can display on the screen, you can see, oh, hey, here's what my impact is compared to the rest of you know, our communities. Right. Um, <clears throat> speaking of waste, uh, three trash bins with a lot of electronics and cameras and a, and a uh, scale seems like it could be wasteful as well. Do you see a future where, you know, that might be reduced? Maybe you have one trash can? Or that What's comes up vision? a lot. I think people don't realize how much energy is wasted by um, creating new products. Mm -hmm. For example, if you would just recycle four cans, that would power the entire installation for three hours. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so I think people, you know, that part's invisible to you because you don't see them mining the aluminum ore mm -hmm. and melting it down and making it mm -hmm. into cans. So a combination, like reclaiming those raw materials, you know, actually saves a lot of energy. <coughs> yeah. um, also, I think it's just the world we live in, in that, 
um, screens are everywhere. You know, I went through the airport. It's like it's all screens. You know, and people don't really kind of talk about the um, you know economic or the cost uh, of those screens. You know, and yeah. yet when we try to do something good for the environment, people are like, oh, how much do these screens right. cost? <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. So it's like, oh, I'm willing to look at a screen for like you know um, Wells Fargo Bank. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, but I'm not willing to look about it, look right. a screen about yeah. saving the environment. Right. You know, so it's yeah. so a little frustrating sometimes to get that question. But yeah. you know, it yeah. will pay for itself right. in terms of environmentally. Hmm. Yeah, and just recently in the Northwest, there's been a big um, news story that China is uh, potentially no longer accepting uh, recycling from um, Seattle and the, the Northwest because it's not sorted properly. It's too mm. contaminated, and so they may stop all um, you know, import of that, which has an mm. enormous impact. So something that could be seen as trivial, like, oh, you know, put it in compost rather than recycling. If you don't get it right, actually, it has a big knock-on effect, so we feel like the impact actually could be really significant. And to add to that, uh, one of the main players uh, who are, you know, involved in this industry would be the waste haulers, so the guys who actually come and pick up your garbage. So for them, it's a huge pain point when they have contaminated or improperly diverted waste and it ends up costing a lot of our clients significantly more money uh, than to implement our installations. Yeah, right. energy. Energy, yeah. fines, pre-sorting. They, they actually, a lot of businesses do a lot to kind of solve this problem, uh, but they're are fairly antiquated solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> the UX Awards, so is there anything, any projects that you've seen or haven't seen yet that you're particularly excited about? I thought that Seedly project was really uh, charming, and I, I could think because it was a consumer project, I thought it was easier to understand in some ways. I thought he presented it well. Mm -hmm. I was also concerned, though, that in some ways, growing a seed, you know, you do that with an egg carton, you know, <laughs> see how to waste it really, yeah. you know, but I could see how it was much more engaging for kids to have this sort of pet Tamaguchi type mm -hmm. thing. I thought that yeah. was a neat project. Absolutely, yeah. I think one more thing to add is sort of like a general trend that you see in t technology development is, for example, where we sit, we you go from one bin to three bins, well actually one bin to two bins to three bins, I think it makes sense that you now have, you know, helper technology that, you know, engages the consumer to do the right thing, or similar to, you know, planting seeds. You know, you go from mm -hmm. an egg carton to whatever they're developing now, mm -hmm. and it changes, you know, our society moves forward in tech. <coughs> that smart project, um, smart design project with yeah. the fingerprint sensor was really well done. I thought the fact that they really thoroughly looked through the cycle of right, it. Right, and didn't just go for the um, the feel good, hey, great, and we'll just hope you do well with that while yeah. we, um, you know, sort of go back to our Western uh, lives, that they were trying to address the problem of other well-intentioned mm -hmm. startups or whatever, you know, trying to introduce products into maybe a world that we'd like to think that we know more about, but we don't. Um, so that they were trying to be really <coughs> rigorous about it and addressing the kind of bigger questions around that sort of technology. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was really positive for designers to be aware of generally. Cool. Um, <clears throat> you all have been involved in the whole startup to acquisition process. Do you have any tips for other people who are thinking about creating a new product or starting a startup and don't oh, do it. Really, I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> it's really easy. <laughs> yeah, it's it stinks, I think. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm a faculty member. <laughs> oh, this is awful. She always tries and keeps up at like 3 a.m. in the morning while the <laughs> team's grinding away. Oh, yeah, it's just <laughs> awful. Like, this is a really bad yeah. idea. <laughs> Work for established companies. <laughs> this is not the way to go. Um, <laughs> but, you know, from a more holistic perspective, <laughs> what you're actually looking for, um, they're not wrong, by the way, uh, <laughs> is uh, I think that, you know, when you're building an idea, uh, it's really important to remember that it takes a whole village to raise a startup and finding amazing mentorship advisors and being able to take your project from you know a prototype to commercialization to selling to finding investors you know it's a very intensive process but having good people around you who believe and support what you're doing is I think the absolute pivotal aspect of it mm 